Hello, faithful friends. I am back for another video lesson, and this is coming from a book that you have not even received yet, so I am truly hopeful that we will be back together again when we can technically all be on the same page. That'd be great. Let us start our lesson with a short prayer for members of our class that we know need our prayers. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with any of our class members and anyone that we know who needs your help and consideration. We ask you to be with them, bring them back to health if that is what is needed, and be with the rest of us as we go through a most difficult time that we have never experienced before. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Well, I'm back, and uh, we need to look at what's going to happen in our new book. And we have the book, and we are in the first unit of the study guide, which is called The Spirit and the Power. And it's a section that looks at the Holy Spirit and uh, it takes its information from the book of Luke and Acts. Well, Wallace and Bill taught from the book of Luke in the first two weeks. Uh, Bill taught us about the ascension of the Holy Spirit and Wallace taught us about how to pray to bring the Holy Spirit into our lives. I will be looking from the book of Acts. And the book of Acts, first chapter, 1 through 11, will show us how Jesus taught his apostles about the Holy Spirit, who will then help them to spread the gospel. Acts is an interesting book. It's the second book uh, written by Luke after he wrote the Gospel of Acts. And this is about the first century A.D., or in the first century A.D., and at that time, if somebody wrote a sequel to a book or a continuation of a history, they did a short summary of the first book at the beginning of the second book. And this is exactly what Luke did. He brought together in the first couple of verses the life and ministry of Jesus through his death, resurrection, and ascension. Well, when he starts Acts, he summarizes all of that and goes right back to the same place where he left off in the book of Luke. So he wrote both of these books, and this first uh, two verses is the short, short summary of that. This is Acts 1, verses 1 and 2. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. Well, Theophilus is not known to historians, but is thought to have been a Christian convert. Luke reminds him about the first book, which was also dedicated to Theophilus, and uh, which was the Gospel of Luke, in which Luke wrote about the life and the work of Jesus. The Gospel ended with the ascension of Jesus into the heavens, and Acts opens with the ascension. A very short summary, but it covers the approximately three years of Jesus' activities before he ascended to heaven. Verse 2 also tells us that Jesus taught his apostles just prior to being taken up to heaven. In verse 3 through 5, Luke proceeds to describe the mission Jesus gave to his apostles during the 40 days between his resurrection and ascension. This is Acts 1, 3 through 5. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the, month, for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John, the Baptist, John baptized with water, and you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. Well, following his resurrection, Jesus appeared to his apostles and he gave them convincing proofs. Now that term is only used this one time in the New Testament and it was from a Greek phrase that meant uh, absolute or hard evidence. Hard evidence or something that would convince you that something in fact did happen. In this case, the hard evidence or the convincing proofs were to prove that Jesus was alive. And during these 40 days before his ascension to heaven, he taught about the kingdom of God to the apostles. He was not talking about uh, a specific church or even about God's people. 
he was describing all of the ways that God is at work in the world, how God will bring transformation and wholeness to the world. This had always been his message and would be the message that the disciples would take to the world. In verse 4, Jesus tells the disciples to remain in Jerusalem and wait for the promised Holy Spirit. Well, they believed the promise of the Holy Spirit because God had promised a resurrection of Jesus and they had actually experienced that so that they knew that this was going to happen. But the question was, why Jerusalem? This was the city where Jesus was crucified, the city where the disciples had actually forsaken the Lord and had fled away to save themselves. The coming Holy Spirit would make them strong and fearless in a place where they had shown themselves to be weak and cowardly. It will also be the beginning city of their continued ministry. Jesus speaks to the disciples in verse 5, and he tells them that John baptized with water. Some, or maybe even all of these disciples, had been baptized by John with water. Now Jesus tells them that they will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. This baptism will be an inward and a spiritual baptism that would empower them for service and will take place in a few days. It will take place actually on the day of Pentecost, 10 days after the ascension of Jesus. The disciples have questions about the coming deliverance of the people of Israel, and they ask Jesus about the restoration of the kingdom of Israel. You know, possibly all the talk about the coming Holy Spirit made them wonder if the new age was about to dawn. I find it interesting after all this instruction, they are still expecting a, an earthly kingdom. They're still expecting a Messiah who will be, be the king and, and uh, take over and restore the kingdom of Israel. So they ask Jesus about it, and he answers them in verses 6 through 8. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. During the time that they came together, the disciples really began to understand the death and resurrection, but they were still, they still saw Christ as this earthly Messiah, so this verse will help them. It is believed that this conversation actually took place on day 40, just before the ascension of Jesus. You notice he didn't give them a date, he didn't give them a time, he didn't even refer to that. But he asked, they asked if Christ would restore Israel, and he didn't give them that information. They will still believe that the, that the Messiah would be an earthly king who would restore the nation. They really couldn't grasp this idea of a heavenly kingdom that would exist for all people. But Jesus realized that they, when they didn't understand it, and he didn't really give them an answer, but instead he told them that God would move in his own time frame and they would not know when. However, he did tell them they would receive the power of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit would help them to understand and to witness for Christ. With the help of the Holy Spirit, they were to witness in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This last statement is often described as an outline to the book of Acts. It describes the ever-widening area to which the followers of Christ would witness until they were taking the word of God to the ends of the earth. The conclusion of Jesus' teaching was his ascension into heaven, followed by a promise that he would return. This is Acts 1, 9 through 11. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, Suddenly, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, 
will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Well, the disciples have been given their mission for the kingdom of God. They also have a mission that requires them to be filled with the Holy Spirit and informed about the kingdom so that they can witness to God in the world. One commentator said, The Spirit opens our minds to understand the scriptures. We must rely on the empowerment as we go to all the nations with the gospel. Following the ascension of Jesus, the book of Acts continued to describe, to describe the mission and work of the apostles. The book presents the history of the Christian movement, the beginning and growth of the Christian church. Over a 30-year period, it follows the church from its beginning in Jerusalem to the political center of Rome. One commentary describes the book as linking the gospel narratives on the one hand and the apostolic letters on the other. It is an excellent start for the study of the expansion of the early Christian church. I look forward to seeing all of you in person as soon as possible. Let's end our lesson with a short prayer. Our most heavenly Father, we thank you for the ability to stay in touch with our class members. We thank you for this lesson on the Holy Spirit, and we thank you for taking care of us in the weeks to come. In Christ we pray, amen.